all the best boxing content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and punch that bell for notifications. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your main event of the evening. Let's get this ring a rocking. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. Step out. Ten-round main event, tail of the tape, Brian. Well, Vin Boy Barrett, 34 years of age, he has the advantage in the reach department. 74 inches, ball at 68 inches. So the reach is going to be the factor here. Hasn't bothered Volak in the past. It bothered him against Ishe Smith. He was counterpunched all night and didn't have a plan B. And now, Volak. As we mentioned, top of the show has a new trainer, a new corner in Tommy Brooks and terrific gist. Vinroy Barrett understands his legs are gonna be the most important part of his game tonight. He says he's in great shape. The question is, can he move away from Volak, make this an outside fight, and still be effective offensively with his jab and his combinations? That's what he'll need to do. Uh, but Volak ran into an uppercut there. But new trainer Tommy Brooks, a great mind in, in, in the ring. And Tommy Brooks studies boxers. He know what Vinboy, he can anticipate what Vinboy Barrett is gonna bring tonight. I think he's trying to fine tune what Pavel Volek has brought. You know, we know about his battery powered combination pressure that he never stops, but uh, he's not the most elusive at times and he doesn't work behind a jab for a short guy. And Volek on the inside now and you see his left foot is in front of his right foot. Not squared up, and that's exactly what Tommy Brooks wants, because you can get much better power with your shot on the inside if your left foot is in front of your right. And not only that, Steve, on the inside, you can eliminate exit from your opponent. Because if you try to go right, you're there. Your left foot is there stationary. If you try to go right, you can just step over to your right. Barrett's been stopped twice in his long career. He's fighting infrequently lately. Really a traveling opponent, as we said. That distance loss to Yuri Foreman, sort of a moral victory in his last fight, but he really didn't win a round in that fight. So he survived rather than thrived at all. And Volek is hammering him now into a neutral corner. Steve, you've watched Volek enough. How much firepower? It's all combination punching, isn't it? Yeah, he's a volume guy. It's not. He's not going to score a lot of knockouts with crisp one shot. Well, we did his loss, and Ishe Smith had too much class for him. And what was upsetting from Volak's standpoint in that fight, Nick, is that Ishe really beat him on the inside. He beat him in his own game. Oh, that's Barrett's not going to do that. Barrett's not punching at all, and Benji Estevez is looking in. He got hurt with a body shot and then a hook, hook to the head. 
Well, this main event could be a short one, but here comes Barrett with an overhand right trying to come back. So he was laying on the ropes and laying in the woods. You know, Volak said he'd been working with Tommy Brooks for only eight months. In eight months, he only had two fights with Tommy. He'd been taking his time with Tommy so they can get to know each other and get develop that chemistry. That's why in eight months, this is only a second fight under Tommy Brooks. No, Volak's not taking his time getting to know Vinroy Barrett, that's for sure. <laughs> Dominating first round from Pablo Volak. In our main event on Broadway Boxing. Stay with us. Decisive first round for Pavel Bolek. A New Jersey state champion as an amateur. He got married in December, had a baby boy, Pavel Jr., last month. You know, he got fabulous sparring for this. Uh, Vivian Harris, Kendall Holt, Ozzie Duran. So Brooks had him in tough. Yeah, he's training in Jersey now as opposed to Gleason's gym in Brooklyn where he used to train. Hey, 20, 27 years of age, 24 fights. Why baby him sparring? You got it. And, and, and remember, I mean, two years ago, in, in 2007, Volak, you know, he had seven bouts. Six of those ended the knockout. So the guy goes rounds and he, can have, and he has knockouts. But I think to put him over the top, I, I'm not saying it's completely essential, but I want to see Brooks lay a jab on him and him to commit. And I also want to see him throw the right punches in the right spots. Vin Roy Barrett, to me, isn't the kind of test. He's almost in a fight he can't win. He's got to just make Bolak uncomfortable, you know, and not let him get dialed in. No, agreed. He doesn't have the strength. He doesn't have the power. Agreed. And I think Bolak sits home a lot and watches the contender series because... <laughs> This is his fourth contender guy <laughs> that he has faced in South Carolina. <laughs> you know, he fought Jonathan Reed, Ishe, Ishe Smith, um, Roberto Bravo. So this is his fourth contender guy. <laughs> He's the anti-contender. He's on auditioning. Well, you can say what you want about Vinroy Barrett and his quality or lack thereof, but I'm still a little bit surprised that Pavel was, has been able to impose his will so quickly in this fight. I thought it would take Agreed. some time. And he's fighting his fight right now. The surprising thing to me is Barrett allowed Volak to be this physical. Yeah, there's nothing coming back effectively. He's not, you know, at, at the very best, he's a boxer runner counter puncher. He's not even running, he's right there. And he's not elusive. I don't mean strictly uh, to get into a dead run. No, but your point is well taken. And Volak is, you know, he's just very comfortable. Nice body shot there, but Barrett, something we have not said a lot of. Although I, I still don't see Volak, Nick, you alluded to this before. I don't see Volak coming in leading with the jab much at all. Yeah. It, at least not an effective jab. It just doesn't feel threatened and it doesn't feel it's necessary, perhaps. Yeah. That's what it is. <laughs> Round three of our main event here in Westbury, Long Island. Vinroy Barron in the blue and Pavel Volak. From Jersey coming on. He's made the fight the entire six minutes. We're in the third. Pavel smiling at Barrett. He's enjoying this. <laughs> the sadistic side of Pablo Polo. <laughs> and in his corner, we should point out, we all saw him, Thomas Adamek, the cruiserweight champion of the world, who's also Polish. The cruiserweight champion currently. Well, we do his fights, you feel like you're in Warsaw, don't you? Oh, yeah. yes, yes. What a contingent of fans he's got in Jersey. Looks like some tape coming loose on the left hand of um, Bolak. That'll buy Barrett some time. Benji Estevez spots it. Tommy Brooks having trouble finding tape. He's working on his Polish too. 
<laughs> we got a little here. Not the same thing. But I said you would like to see more jabs from, from Bolak. And the first thing off of that um, timeout, trainer Tommy Brooks, yo, let me see the jab. Mm. Body work again from Barrett. If physique mean anything, then Roy Barrett gonna get some points. <laughs> Um, the reason why Barrett may not get into this fight, his first thought, or his first instinct is defense. Uh, mm -hmm. To try to get out of the way. He's not thinking often. Now Bolek finally landing some clean shots. The sloppy first half of this uh, third round. And to add to Brian's point, a lot of times when you fight a guy who's an offensive fighter, the way you have to beat him is with offense. And Ishe Smith did that to Pablo Bola, but Barrett just doesn't have the nah, he have strength to punching power, does he? And now his hands are down, and that's He's an invitation to disaster. Yeah, well, why get outworked, right? Even if you, if you can't punch as hard, don't get outworked. I was going to say, a guy like Bola, believe it or not, is pretty simple to fight. He's not hard to find. He comes right at you. He throws the basic punches. There's no trickery in the awesome. yeah. So a guy like Bolak is very simple to fight. Ah, uh, to the fourth. Nick Charles, Brian Adams, Steve Farhood, ringside, Broadway boxing. Glad you're enjoying. Hope you're enjoying this main event. Barrett certainly isn't running. He's been on the ropes a lot. Maybe with the long layoffs, he forgot how to run. Yeah, it's asking a lot of Vinroy Barrett to fight 10 hard rounds against Pablo Bola, given that he scored once in 07, once in 08. That, that, that's, that's what I was trying to allude, allude to. Yeah, Bolek doing a good job going to the body this round, which would take it further out of uh, the legs away. And Bolak is landing a nice, sneaky right hand. Right foot. Yeah, across. He's setting him up at the hook. And man, if something doesn't come back soon. I guess Vim, Vimboy Barrett, you know, he figured, as long as he slip and slide and look like he's rolling with punches, he's OK. But, but I don't think he, he realized that, you know, throwing counter punches are legal. <laughs> Bolak just in code, and he was warned about using the head. He's really bodying um, Barrett now. But Barrett's just such an inviting target, he is not moving at all. No, and, and Bolak doesn't need to use his head to get on the inside. It, it, he's doing it very easily just with walking to his man. Barrett's been flat-footed the entire fight. Bolak doing a good job of keeping that left foot in front of the right. Get more leverage. I think Tommy Brooks would like to see him spin more and attack from different angles when he's on the inside. He hasn't done a lot of that. Takes a lot of will, not just skill, to fight Pablo Volak. Well, Volak coming off two stoppages since that loss to Ishe Smith last August. But prior to that, he had gone rounds, gone 10 again. He's been 10 three times. But Steve, it, 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 it takes exactly that to fight Volek, will. And it's not just a will to survive, which ba Barrett has shown so far. It takes a will to win. Right, right. Because if you have that will to win, and that's, 
intention of winning. You will capitalize. You will see mistakes there. Well, it's a sparring session now, isn't it, guys? I think it's been a sparring session. Then boy back, legs against the ropes, and slide, roll the shoulders, another come back. You gotta start thinking, is it time for Bolak to rev it up and try to get him out of there? <laughs> Round five, our main event. Vinroy Barrett in blue has got to pick it up, and Pavel Volek may be thinking about making it a short night. It's been all his way, but maybe he to absolutely dazzle, he's going to start thinking stoppage. You got to give Pavel points for consistency, though. He's in there to fight in the same way every round. Yeah. So is Vinroy Barrett. Yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> unfortunately. But, you know, Pavel's an easy guy to root for. He really is. And, and the Polish boxing fans, I think anybody in the Northeast knows, they're about as rabid as there are for any boxing fans. We saw it first with Galata, and then now we see it with Adamek. They are great boxing fans. Oh, yeah. It's a pleasure. Now, although they come out for Adamek, they came out for Andrew Galata. Yes. They, they sure did. Bow, I've guess. been to several fights with Andrew Galata. Michael Grant, Riddick Bow, Lennox Lewis. They came out. Andrew well, you never know what you're going to get from Andrew. So. Well, we, yeah. were in <laughs> we were in Detroit that night when we knew against Tyson. Remember, Steve, way back? Oh, yeah. We didn't get much. No. Yeah. That's when Alzardo said he is not quitting tonight. <laughs> Put them out. <laughs> he pushed them out there. Uh huh. But Adamic, I mean, Pavel is exciting because of his style. Adamic is thrilling. It really is. And right? He's championship caliber. What a chin, huh? What a resolve. He gets hit, and he keeps coming. Because the test of fortitude is just tremendous. And yeah, I love it, his focus. Uh, before his title fights, sleeps at home, no big entourage, just a regular day, wakes up, plays with his kids, kisses his wife, and goes to work. Well, me and Paul Malinaji was talking about that earlier today. You know, so, some fighters want to go away to camp. They have to get away to camp. I always thought if you have to go to camp, you have no discipline. You don't know what you should be doing. Stay home. Why you have to go to camp? Well, it's an interesting theory. What did Paulie say? No, Paulie, Paul, could Paulie brought the subject up that he don't want to go away to camp. That's because he likes the food in Brooklyn, so. <laughs> so I told him I, I, I posed camp, training camp. I went, away, I went away to training camp one time. I knew what I had to do at home. Yeah, but not everybody has your discipline. Barrett's taking a beating and he's walking forward. <laughs> it's tough, man. Estevez is looking just at him. And see, this is the difference, I think, that Tommy Brooks had brought to the table. You notice on the inside, that was a low blow by Benboy Barrett, but referee Estevez was out of road. He caught it. He caught it, yeah. But as call I said, from both of you. This is the, I think, difference. Halfway through, it's apparent to us, Vinroy Barrett. Oh, he got headbutted there. You know what? Yes, it was a headbutt, but Vinroy Barrett did not react until Benji Estevez stepped in. If Estevez would have never stepped in, Vin Barrett continues to fight. He reacted off the referee. Barrett has to get a point somehow, even if it's a deduction from his opponent. This is clear. Barrett gets drilled with a right hand. Solid right hand. And Bullock has his opponent in his corner. Barrett just no legs, staying on the ropes, no offense. Conclusion, he's in a fight he can't win. It's a pound. And Barrett has been stopped twice. You know, it's academic because uh, Barrett's not a big puncher, but I'm trying to recall if uh, Bolek's been buzzed. I mean, every boxer gets buzzed. You've had, what, all these fights. 
closing in on 30, but I, I've never seen him stunned. I, I don't think punches has really bothered him. Certainly not in this fight. But he's just not trying to win. And you want to see a professional boxer try to win. No matter the level of success, you want to see him try to win. I want to see an amateur boxer try to win. But if you're perhaps not at 100% because of inactivity or whatever, a style like Pavel Volax is going to take away that ability to show that you want to win more easily than another style might. Steve, let me tell you a little secret. My last performance inside the ring, um, the guy was a bull. I mean, a beast. I had a broken hand. In the second round, I broke my hand. I still tried to win. I knew there was no shot in hell I was winning. I still tried to win. Well, you had that kind of fiber in there. You still do. Again. Volak bearing shots to the body. Barrett trying to come back with combinations. But look, he's right there trying to roll away from things, but right in front of Volak. I mean, there's not much more I can say Volak should be doing. Because I think he, he's complete right now. Only other thing he can do is, is maybe land a power shot, a blind power shot, and get the knockout. But he's doing everything right, I think. Yeah. Looks like uh, Barrett may be bothered uh, right eye a little bit. Blink his yeah. hooks. I'm curious to hear what Tommy Brooks, trainer Volat, has to say in between rounds. Tommy Brooks just told me. Uh, I said, what do you want, to get him out of, close the show? He said, yeah, get him out of there. He's right in front of uh, Pavel. There's no excuse. And I agree. Yeah, he could pitch a shutout for 10 rounds, but there's been by Barrett, as you said, he's been stopped twice, and why not a third time? And there's more than one way to stop a guy. You can knock him out. You can also make him quit. That's and that, it. that may be what we that, see here. And that is the worst type of knockout. If you're a boxer, you never want to quit. So if you quit, that means a lot. Well, then he's got to start throwing even more combinations because Barrett's right in front of him. And Barrett's movement will tell you, you just walked in this place and sat down, you think he's winning. Now, this is very important, Guy, I think, for uh, Pavel Volek to take the next step, you know, from B-fighter to maybe a serious contender. You know, where do you have him now? Prospect? Veteran prospect? Uh, you know, I, I don't know if I'd describe him as a prospect. He he's took a little his, more than a prospect. Yeah, he, he took his shot with Ishe Smith, and he lost, so he's got a lot to prove. And if I he agree. wants to be, you know, a fringe contender, which I wouldn't rate him as yet, uh, he's going to need that signature win, which he doesn't have yet, and this isn't it. No, but I would say he needs to stop it now. Maybe he's close to getting it. Barrett could surrender. His corner could surrender. Benji Estevez could say, I've seen enough. Yeah, I don't see anything coming back. I mean, again, a fight you can't win. Getting later like this, he's taking punishment. I think Estevez is taking a serious look as his corner shoot, as uh, Barrett's corner shoot. And Pavel Volok is not the biggest puncher in the world. Matter of fact, he's not a big puncher at all. But accumulation, as you said, make him quit. Smother him. But I'll give him credit, because even in that E.J. Smith loss, he was coming and he kept trying. And that was impressive against as savvy a veteran as E.J. And speaking of trying, Barrett is not, and I think it's yep. gonna be over soon. And I think Benji Estevez might stop it. That's it, I mean, he's looking now. And He's got to tell him to start fighting. Barrett unabashedly quinting, clinching now. He hasn't done much of that, so he's hanging. His will is hanging on by a thread. Looks staggered there in the corner. He's tired. 
just holding on. You know, I can't even say Vinroy Barrett's a spent bullet because he's never really fired, has he? Not at all. And, and the, the, the interesting thing here is, you know as a boxer if you can get a knockout or not. I think Volek still believes he can get a knockout. Oh, I do too. But if I was in Volek's shoes, to be honest, I would say to myself, ah, I'm just winning. The guy's going to survive. I'm not, I'm not getting a knockout. But Volex probably puts himself in the least amount of danger when he fights his fight. So he should keep doing what he's doing, and that is what he's doing. As soon as a short pressure fighter stops applying pressure, turning that lack of reach into an advantage, it becomes a huge disadvantage and it gets hit flush. And we've seen it with a million of them, from Joe Frazier and Mike Tyson, all the way down to Ray Mancini and a bunch of others. You're right, Steve. Barrett just holding on. He doesn't want to fight anymore. Point deduction for holding on. So exasperation absolutely clearly setting in. Tommy Brooks telling uh, Volak to measure him with the jab and finish up with combinations. Barrett with a spark of life. Gets hit flush with a right hand there. Well, I could go 40 rounds like this. Yeah, I know it. Gerald Reed in the, uh, the chief second in the corner of uh, Vinroy Barrett, and uh, he hasn't yet shown work, any sir. indication to uh, stop this fight. But he's out of, out, of, his gum. out of advice. Well, now the corners can talking to each other. Yeah, in the huddle now. I think they're going to do something soon. Well, how can they not see what we see? I mean, at this point. I'm predicting this is the last round. The question I have for the corner is, do you care about your boxing? Well, I was wrong. They're out for the ninth. I'm surprised, too. I'm sorry. More or less, I'm sorry. Yeah, you're <laughs> right. Surprised and sorry, Stephen. I mean, <laughs> why? Well, we can't only blame the corner. We have to also, if we think this fight should be stopped, to also point the finger at the referee a little bit. The referee's job, though, if punches are coming back, really can't stop it. Well, there, I disagree with you. If a guy's getting beaten up and has no chance to win, I think you can in that situation. It's not often that that situation presents itself, but I think this is an example of it. I mean, Vinroy Barrett is punching. It's a strong argument and on both sides. He is he is punching, and you know, maybe his worst trait is he's a pretty durable guy. He doesn't look like he's getting yeah. beaten down and necessarily taken apart. Right, if he was getting hit and moved with every shot, then from the referee's standpoint, you stop it, even if he is punching, because he's getting moved with every shot. But he's not really being, you know, pushed around physically with punches. But the accumulation is. Oh no, I agree, it's Steve. It's tough, man. I agree. I, I would love to argue with you, but. <laughs> Bullock buries a shot to the body, back with a nothing combination, but backfiring is uh, Ben Roy Barrett trying to counter punch now. So. Volak has dictated start to finish. We're not finished yet. We're in the ninth of a scheduled 10 rounder. Our junior middleweight main event here on Broadway Boxing. More body work from Volak. Well, Vinvoy Barrett told us 
told the three of us at the way in. Every loss, there was an excuse behind it. <laughs> I want to hear what's the excuse tonight. <laughs> you know, I got hit too much. That's why you lost. I want to hear the excuse. Because <laughs> normally, that's how it works, right? You get a yeah, hit. <laughs> but you ever meet a fighter who lost a fight who didn't have an excuse? Yeah. It's pretty rare. But every fight? Oh, he's getting hit now. I mean, that would be the excuse I give him tonight. <laughs> I pat him on the back and say, Benroy, you, you got the true. perfect excuse. <laughs> <laughs> you got hit a little more than you hit the guy. That's the reason for the loss. Combination from Volak and Barrett just tying him up now. This just feels like deja vu for me. I ran out of things to say that <laughs> Volak should be doing. Every round looks the same, right? And we have one to go. Tenth and final round of our main event, and Pavel Volak has been in complete command. All right, it's time to bet. Does he get the stoppage? Yes or no, Brennan? Uh, no. Nick, did you get the stoppage? I, I, I said it two rounds ago. I'm still going with it. But, you know, I, you gave me a lifeline. <laughs> <laughs> You'd like to call a friend, right? <laughs> yeah. But I, I, I can predict one thing. What about it, Steve? No, I don't think he's getting it. Unless <laughs> unless the, the corner pulls the plug or the referee pulls the plug. I'll predict one thing, though. Ben Boy Barrett would not get hit after this round. <laughs> <laughs> by Volak. Except by his wife, maybe. For this kind of a performance. <laughs> but seriously, uh, Bolak obviously wins the fight one way or the other. Uh, just looking at the junior middleweight division and up the road, Steve, some assessments of, of what you see in him and where he's vulnerable. Uh, well, I th Nick, I think he's going to get another chance at an Ishe Smith type opponent. Uh, he failed in that first test. It's a question of how much he learned from it. And I really feel the key with Pavel Volak is matchmaking because he has a particular style. That style is going to work well against certain guys, work less effectively against other styles. So who he fights is going to be just as important as the level of the fighter. But he will get another shot and at becoming again, a Again, at a contender. guy 27 years old, to look at him against the, forget about it, an Angulo or a Cintron or some of these, or not Cintron even, but the, James Kirkland and such, it's, it's no way. It's a different class of fighter. Yeah, and it's a different class of puncher, too. No doubt. Because Pavel doesn't have that kind of power. You know, but that's the thing I want to see. Does he have the skills to neutralize a big bomber, a threatening guy? You know, I, I'll guard on the limb, and I have a great deal of respect for Tommy Brooks as a teacher, because we don't have many teachers in this game anymore. But... Um, or in the sport, I should say. But I do not think Volak will be able to win on an A level. Because on an A level, you have the guys physically strong and intelligent. The B level fighters, he'll get away with some, like you said, depends on matchmaking. But the A level, mm -hmm. guys are too smart, too smart and they're physically strong. I'm with you. You know, one thing he's got going for him down the road is should he advance that far is the junior middleweight division is not particularly strong at the top. And it lost for at least temporarily one of its top stars, James Kirkland, to legal problems. We don't know what will happen there. Well, I was wrong again. I'm 0 for 2. <laughs> but that's better than 0 for 10, which was Vinroy Barrett tonight. But I bet <laughs> you can pick the winner of the fight tonight. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, after 10 rounds of boxing, we go to the scorecards. Judge Ron McNair scores the bout 100 to 89. Judge Carlos Ortiz scores the bout 100 to 88. And Robin Perez scores the fight 99-89. For your winner, by unanimous decision, Powell.